Traveling to come to this place, I had traveled way out of my way around the Syrian border. Of course, on the Israel side, otherwise, I wouldn't be here to talk to you. And one of the things I wanted to talk about was the Shrina. The Shrina is a divine presence, it is that thing that we feel when we're feeling spiritually aroused. That's the Shrina that we're feeling. When Hashem sent us into exile, when He destroyed the, the Temple, He sent the Shechina, which is compared to a mother, out with us, with, with His children. That the Shechina, like our mother, would protect us. The Shechina is, I guess you would describe it as an extension to Hashem. But it's something that's very hard to describe. So, in order to go and and keep the children, B'nai Yisrael, the, the, us Jews, alive and functioning in this gullus, in this exile, this Shrina protects us, protects us sometimes from harm, and it brings us close to Hashem. And a person who connects themselves to the Shrina is someone who, whenever a person learns Torah, the Shechina attaches himself, to, attaches to that person. And the Shechina is considered like the feminine, the feminine side. Because of its nurturing capabilities, that it nurtures the soul of mankind. And so in order to connect to the Shechina, which is in Golas, which is in exile, a person also has to be in exile. In exile from the ways of other nations which lead a person to sin. In exile sometimes from their hometown. We know that Sadiqim, the greatest of rabbis, would constantly travel and they would disguise themselves as a simple person when they traveled in order to not draw attention to themselves. And they would travel and travel and travel. Many tzaddikim, many rebbe's today travel to many different towns to do kira, to outreach to Jews. And when a person is traveling, like I'm saying, they're connecting themselves to the Shechina, which is in Golas, which is stuck in 
the places that are, are somewhat empty. Sometimes the Shekhinah is stuck in those places that there's a lot of tuma, there's a lot of, of bad things going on, a lot of people sitting. The Shekhinah is stuck in that place, and when a person passes by that place, when they say a blessing, when they think of Hashem, when they do a mitzvah, they elevate that place back up. And it's said that the people that are somehow, are lost in Judaism, in many ways, is the Shekhinah is, is very attached to them, because these are very holy souls that are stuck in the, stuck in the, in the exile. And if only they would turn around. Like we know that the Baal Tshuva, the one who repents, who comes back to Hashem and starts following Judaism, they're able to reach a higher level than those who have been religious their entire life. This is because the Shechina is with them. They just have to turn around and look and see that their mother has been protecting them all along. Their mother, the Shechina, the Divine Presence is there. And, you know, if you ask a person, you even speak to a person who isn't religious at all, who who has no experience whatsoever, and you start talking to them about Judaism even a little bit, you see the pintala, you see that spark that is so beautiful, so beautiful inside them that it's just waiting for someone to just, whether, I don't know what it is, just saying shalom, right? The right person to just say shalom with all their hearts, or maybe to hear the right words of wisdom to touch their soul, maybe the, this, to see the light of Shabbos for the candles, for Kiddush, or the right synagogue, the right rabbi. But these people are some of the highest souls in the world. You know, when, when Hashem wants to bring a very high soul down from Shemayim, the Satan, the evil, the evil one, he says, no, 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 don't do it. And what, what do you mean, don't do it? I want to bring the soul down. So they make a compromise. They make a compromise. And the soul goes to a, a family that isn't religious whatsoever. And the person grows up totally devoid of any religious affiliation. And one day, one day a spark gets lit. And out of the whole one person, out of the entire family, the person's relatives are not religious, their parents are not religious, or even their grandparents may not have been religious. But their great grandparent was religious. And here the soul comes out and it starts to shine. It starts to shine, it starts to learn the Torah, it starts to be affiliated again. And it shines greater than that person who's been religious their entire life because the Shrina, the divine presence is with that person. That was a holy soul that was compromised in order to come down here because it couldn't just go into, into a garment like this. It had to, 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 to work from the bottom up and to grow. And there's so much light. There's so much light in this person, in these people. And so the Shrina, if you want to connect to the Shrina, you have to go to these lower places. You have to go to the middle of the Golan Heights sometimes and just be all by yourself. And you have to find the Shrina there in those places. And sometimes you have to find the Shrina in Walmarts, in Kmarts. Sometimes you have to find them, find the Shrina in, in, uh, in, in the empty lot. Sometimes the Shrina is right there in front of you in your home. You just have to go and, and make peace with your family. But the Shrina is something that we have to think about. We have to think about the, the elevating the Divine Presence, elevating these sparks. I'm talking about the Divine Presence, the Shrina, we have to elevate her back up, back up to the higher heights where she shouldn't be in exile with, and, and suffering and pain. We know the Shrina cries out. She cries out. She's crying. When will my people, when will my people come and return to Hashem? When will the base of Migdash, the Holy Temple, be rebuilt? The Shrina's crying out. And... You know, I can try to hear the Shekhinah, but you out there, maybe you who's never even walked in the synagogue or ever even put on a pair of tzitzis, these tzitzis that I'm wearing, or you who, who hasn't worn a kippah in 10 years, the Shekhinah, my friend, is with you. It's with you. And when you even do the smallest thing to return to Hashem, you elevate that Shekhinah, you elevate the sparks like, like no other person can. Because you are the, the hidden spark, you are the hidden spark in the exile. It goes the same way with converts. A convert, when a person converts to Judaism, they're bringing all this darkness, all this darkness to light. And so what does someone like me, what do I do to, to go and, and, and to connect to the Shekhinah? Even unwillfully, sometimes I'm sent to the Syrian border to drive around in circles, just drive and drive and drive. But, but 
I really driving or am I trying to dig up little, little sparks and I don't even realize it? But there's no greater way to connect to the Shechina than to learn the Torah, especially at Chatzos, especially at midnight. At night, it's so special. But one of the things today, when I was growing up in regular yeshivas, they don't teach you, they don't explain to you, they don't explain to you that you can truly be a part of this idea of the tikkun ha'olam, the rectification of the world, just by learning Torah, that you can think about the Shrina when you think about Hashem, even when you don't have a book in front of you, even when you not, you don't even have a Torah book in front of you, just the thought of Hashem in a place can, can, can connect a person to the Shrina, Shrina is something that a person can feel. They can actually feel, when you feel that light, you feel that sudden spark of happiness, you, don't, you can't even explain it, it's a Shrina, it's a Shrina, it's a Shrina that you somehow connected yourself to, and that's the time you should go and do more mitzvot, and learn Torah, and teach Torah, and, do, and, and give charity, this is the time when you feel like that, that, that joy from the Shrina. The Shrina is also compared to Rachel Imenu, Rachel who was uh, the mother, mother of the Jewish people. Ay, ay, ay.